let's talk about the Balenciaga collection. I mean, Demna is on his post controversy tour and all these things. And I always, the question I want to pose to you before this even starts, before we talk about Balenciaga, is is Balenciaga finally back? Is Balenciaga like fully past the whole controversy? Um, or are they still trying to get out of it? Now, with this collection, uh, this collection was inspired by LA culture and mainly LA celebrity culture. Um, so there are many odes to a lot of things that we associate with celebs and like LA culture. And it even comes down to even where the location is. I mean, you can literally see the Hollywood sign from where the, the spectators were seated looking at the show. So that was really interesting. And Demna really has these interesting ways of talking about things in a fun way, whether it's climate change or crisis or sometimes even war. Um, he finds ways to bring intrigue to talking about these things. Um, and these references, I mean, they're clear to see, like this first look with this topless guy and the running shoes, he has his phone to his ear, he's holding a water bottle. It reminds me of the last time I went to Venice Beach and you literally see um, all those topless guys that go to that gym in Venice Beach, that like outdoor gym. They're always like on their phone looking absolutely dench and holding a water bottle and things along those lines. Um, so it's very interesting. And you have these very Pilates looking fits. And something I've always found funny actually about Pilates and yoga, I find it really interesting that Pilates is associated with like celeb culture and like high society because the cost of actually going to a Pilates class, class sorry, is not necessarily more expensive than doing something else that isn't seen as so fancy. Like if you, I don't know, play for a basketball team, like I used to, amongst like basketball fees and like travel and like loads of stuff, I'll probably spend less money doing yoga or Pilates. But Pilates is seen as an activity for like high society. It's just really interesting how it's associated with those things. Um, and obviously, I think in total with this collection, it was a very California, like SoCal kind of aesthetic. Um, you had like people wearing the hoodies. You know, every time you see paparazzi taking pictures of a lot of celebs when they want to look normal, um, and some of these shoots by paparazzis, we don't know if they're real or not, or if they're fake and staged. It's always some like celebrity holding coffee and like trying to look normal, wearing a hoodie. And I feel like Demna was making fun of that. In many ways, you see models holding these <laughs> like Erewhon bags. And for guys that don't know, Erewhon is literally one of the most expensive grocery stores in the world. Um, and a lot of like rich people, especially in LA, they shop at Erewhon. But yeah, just very, very different odes to celebrity culture. The cups of coffee, trying to look normal, holding phones to their ears. It's very interesting. And to quote what Demna Vasalia said about why he's so infatuated with LA culture and Hollywood and things like that, he said, we have all these pictures of people on the streets of LA, celebrities coming out of restaurants, the gas station, drive throughs In general, not only celebrities, but the people of LA. And I realize it's probably the biggest influence that I have on my fashion aesthetic. I love it. Something else he said about LA, to quote him again, is he said, LA is my favorite city in the world. All my cultural evolution, when I was a teenager growing up in this kind of post-Soviet vacuum, it really came from here. Through movies, music, I mean, everything that I kind of absorbed that later on started to become part of my fashion references. So that's kind of why he wanted to dedicate a whole collection to sort of this LA culture, celebrity culture kind of theme. So yeah, I mean, all in all is interesting. Um, I do have a lot of critiques. I, what I will say before I go to the critique is something that's always a point of interest with Balenciaga collections is always the footwear. Every single season, they have a really, really new, good lineup of footwear. And with this collection, they have obviously the fur boots. They have those massive running sneakers, which kind of goes into the theme of this sort of athleisure look to the collection. 
And I think they're called the 10X sneakers. That, that's what Balenciaga is calling on their website. Um, so, yeah, it's just really interesting. I, and even just because Erewhon also is kind of like Whole Foods as well. It's almost seen as like wellness. And LA is kind of one of the wellness capitals of the world where everyone is all about wellness. I mean, I was watching Selling Sunset the other day and Christine had a house opening and people were getting Botox at a house opening. In my head, I was just thinking that's the most LA thing that ever exists. You'd not see that anywhere else in the world but LA. That's the only place that you'd do something like that. As everyone is always like, you watch all these TV shows of celebrities in LA and they're getting injected like vitamins after their gym workouts. It's just hilarious. So that LA is just literally just, oh, wellness, oh, yoga. Oh, in, I inject myself with these fancy vitamins that are going to make me live longer. Like, that's kind of like LA, the LA vibe I get. Um, I've been to LA a few times, but I obviously wasn't in LA long enough to meet people that are like that. But from what I see on TV and stuff, that's kind of the vibe you get. And obviously, Demna Vasali is looking at this from a perspective of that kid um, that was watching the films and looking at the mu and listening to the music and watching the music videos. So it's kind of like an outsider's perspective on what LA culture is, uh, so to speak. David Hunter said, I'm sitting in Los Angeles in a health food restaurant. <laughs> oh my God, Botox parties, no way. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, what I was going to say, uh, something I actually thought really, that was really interesting about the footwear actually, uh, Kathy Horan in her review said that these oversized sort of 10X sneakers is akin to the too muchness of LA. And I really love the way that she worded that. Um, but yeah, what talking about uh, my critique. So my critique about this collection, obviously the inspiration is interesting, like looking at LA culture, this Y2K athleisure aesthetic, looking at like celebrity culture, making fun of it in a way. But Demna is the same person that wants to convince us that every single thing he does is all about the craft. And he had, and I'm going to play it later, and he had that time when he was saying that people think what I do is ironic. It's not, I'm not, it's not a joke. This is very serious. Like, it's all about the craft. And it's like, it's really hard to tell people it's all about the craft when you send collections on the runway that one, are so predictable. Two, your aesthetic is not really developing anymore. And three, at the, at the crux of what we're seeing on a runway, they are hoodies and tights and sneakers. So if you're going to tell us it's about craft, it just, it like a lot of the pieces in this collection remind me of early Vetmore. Um, and so if you're going to try and convince us that, you know, it's all about the craft, that I'm a serious designer, it's all, it's just, it's very hard to make that case for yourself when this is what we're seeing on the runway. Um, and while I find the interesting, really, the inspiration, sorry, really interesting, I think it, it's just a bit of a contradiction. It, 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 it's not adding up what he's saying and then what we're seeing on the runway. I don't think those two things are merging. It's just a bit confusing. I don't, I don't like he says things and it's like it, <laughs> what you're saying, it doesn't add up, Demna. And I think sometimes with his work, and I, I've always said this from the Vetmont days, that he asks really interesting questions through his work, whether it's tackling deep topics like war, um, you know, climate crisis. Uh, and it's also interesting how every time he talks about these things, there's a really odd and awkward dichotomy between his customer base, which are rich people that can afford really expensive clothes, and then the people that he's talking about or the things that he's tackling, like people that are you know, victims of war and things like this are not people that are out here buying the Vetmore pieces or buying the Balenciaga pieces. So in that respect, there's kind of like always this odd dichotomy. And I don't know if that is deliberate on his part or if that's just, you know, it just kind of happens and like works out that way. And I think it's fine to make a commentary on things in that certain way. And I also think it's okay if you rely on publicity stunts and you rely on creating memes as a brand to keep attention. I mean, it's very hard to keep attention in fashion. So whatever way you do that, 
that's completely fine. But what you can't do, and which is what Demna has done, is pretend like that's not what you're doing. That's what, because we're not stupid. Like, you can't tell us, oh, it's, it's not about memes. It's not about hype. Is something also he said. He said it's only about craft. That's just not true. None of us are stupid enough to just believe you just because you say it. Like, that's not what we're looking at is that's just not the case. And it's like, at the end of the day, I don't know if like sometimes when we say that he's sometimes relying on memes and relying on these, you know, low hanging fruit marketing tactics to keep people um, interested in Balenciaga that were saying that he's not a good designer. No one ever said that. I mean, Demna's... <laughs> Demna's background and his resume is unquestionable. I mean, you went to the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp. You worked at Margiela. You worked at Louis Vuitton. You did what you did at Vetmore. You work at Balenciaga. No one is questioning Demna's skill as a designer. We've seen so many different things from Demna that we know he's capable of designing most things. Um, so it's not really a slight on him as a designer from a skill standpoint because he's always going to be a skilled designer regardless of whatever he puts on the runway. But that being said, just don't pretend like you're not relying on hype and trying to generate hype to keep the brand afloat because that's exactly what you've been doing the whole time. Uh, the pe people forgot about the scandal so fast. I don't think so. I think all of us are still remembering the scandal. I think the question I posed at the start, and I'll pose it again, is... Balenciaga passed the scandal now. Do we think that Balenciaga has completely recovered from the scandal? Or are Balenciaga still, you know, trying to get out of it? And also something, going back to my critique of, uh, you know, Demna. Demna's saying it's not about hype, but Demna is always putting celebrities on the runway. For the past at least four, five, six seasons, the... Runway has literally been full of just celebrities walking and not actual models. So once again, if you're saying that it's only about the craft, the focus is on the craft, you're going to have models that, you know, can walk better. You're not going to have celebrities like Cardi B. And I love Cardi B. I think she looks amazing and most of the things she wears. Shout out to her stylist. But seeing her walk in this runway was not fantastic because she looked like she was struggling to walk. Um, but why is Cardi B on the runway? Because Cardi B is a big figure. She's big in fashion right now. And there's hype with Cardi B's name. That's why you put on the runway. So once again, saying, oh, it's not about the hype. It's just at some point you have to, somebody has to ask Demna these questions. <laughs> this has turned into a Demna rose, but I don't disagree with the word of it. Yeah, because I mean, I'm a fan of Demna's work ultimately, but the fact, the reality is he's not evolving as a designer and there's, there's nothing wrong with saying that. I mean, I say this all the time that Demna's collections are so predictable. You always see hoodies and athleisure at the start. Then you see these like really oversized boxy blazers and like really baggy trousers. And then at the end, the last like four or five looks, we get some interesting sort of couture level dresses. That literally happens every single Balenciaga collection. It's so like, it's almost like a formula. It's so formulaic. Exactly. We're basically just saying do better, Demna. That's exactly what we're saying. That's exactly what we're saying. I don't know if they've recovered, but at the same time, I honestly cannot tell the direction Balenciaga or rather Demna is going. Maybe a celeb first clientele model. Yeah. It's kind of strange. It's almost like, not like Demna should leave Balenciaga, but I just don't see where Balenciaga goes from here because it's just going to be more of the same. It's just going to be really predictable. We're going to get the same. Like, see the silhouette on the screen right now? He's been doing that silhouette forever. That's a silhouette that's inspired by um, his Orthodox Christian background, being from Georgia. And that's where he got that silhouette originally from. And he's been using it over the course of so many collections in Balenciaga. Um, that sort of, like, flowy priest um, gown, silhouette. So that's what I'm saying when I say his stuff is so predictable. I can literally, like, tell you all the references to most of the stuff in his work before, like, the collection even happens. It's just crazy. 
Balenciaga needs a new creative director. It's the same thing every season. BDSM Hellraiser every season now with oversized Uggs and fear of God sweatsuits. <laughs> and as much as I am a fan of Demna's work, that I can't argue with that take. I'm not even gonna lie, I can't, I can't argue. Daniel says, why not just put the super commercial pieces, hoodie, sweatpants, ETC in the showroom versus on the runway? I know, right? And once again, it's not a slight on Demna because we know Demna's a sick designer. We know he's amazing. I've seen Demna design stuff that is like, wow. But that's just not what we're getting right now. Okay, here comes Cardi B. Just look at the way Cardi B is walking. She looks like she's struggling to walk in the outfit. But yet Demna is trying to tell us that it's not about hype. We also have another one of these, like, making fun of, you know, celebrities always holding coffee in their hand. Also, what is it about, like, these, this, like, bin bag fabric that is really big in um, fashion right now? These, like, bin bag looking fabrics. Uh, what do you think it takes for Balenciaga to recover? I don't know. I mean, I'm not the Balenciaga customer. That's why I was posing the question to like you people as the audience. Um, Cause I want to like have different perspectives. I don't know if they've completely recovered or not from it. Like, that's why I want to know what the narrative is. Like, I only know really the UK perspective and what people are saying in the UK. Like, I don't know how people feel about Balenciaga in let's say New York or LA or like Canada, or, like anywhere else, like France, Italy, I don't know. <laughs> the oversized furry coats in the heat is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That I love that last look, by the way, that like funnel neck um, dress. That's really interesting. And that's, the funny thing is the, that last look, let me go back to that last look, is actually what, when we're saying like Demna's like, look at these dresses, these last dresses, which he always does it every season. The last few dresses are kind of interesting. Like look at, the, look at the construction and the silhouette of these last looks, amazing. But they're just three or four looks. And then the rest, look at, look at what we're getting. Let's restart the runway show. For the rest of the show, we're getting a topless guy with 10X sneakers, wearing shorts, with a phone to his head, holding a water bottle. We're getting tights and, like, sneakers. Like, this is literally going on the runway of Balenciaga. I'm not making this up. This is literally what is on the runway. From a retailer perspective, Balenciaga is selling well when it's not when it's on sale slash promotion, but not really at full price. Interesting. <laughs> Need that funnel look for a shoot. Don't show the girlies it. <laughs> yeah, it literally is giving Lululemon. It does look like a Lululemon uh, capsule collection. It does. And even like all the, like the Era One capsule collections, it looks like merch. Like this is what Balenciaga has literally been reduced to in some respects. It's almost like damn near merch. That's what is just so crazy to me. Like I was looking at their website the other day and genuinely that Era One collection quite literally looked like merch. Doesn't, isn't this merch? Isn't that basically what that is? At like insane prices as well. Literally, an Era One Balenciaga bag for $425. Insanity. Yeah, the 10XL sneaker. This is the 10XL sneaker. Um, newly, newly debuted. Oh my God. $1,500. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> I know that obviously across the board in luxury fashion, the prices have gone up. Like ev across the board, like all the brands. But $1,500 for a sneaker is actually insane. That is like scary. This is what the people are paying. Oh, I found an even better depiction of the Air One merch collection by Balenciaga. So you've got aprons, you've got printed t-shirts, printed zip hoodies, a uh, funnel t-shirt. What else have we got? We've got a tote bag and we have a cap. Interesting, 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 interesting. Like, look at the prints, the Y2K prints all over. This is actually what Balenciaga's reduced to. So why I'm showing you this and why I'm, why I'm going in so much on Demna is because Demna is trying to deceive us into thinking that his Balenciaga is all about the craft. This is the craft that Balenciaga, that Demna is trying to lead us to believe that he's focusing on. This is the craft. Let's have a look at the craft. No logo. 
the it's a hoodie that says it's a hoodie and you know tight shirts that say no logo this is the craft that demna supposedly is trying to convince us that he's been focusing on over the past couple of years i'm not buying it i don't think anyone else is buying it though <laughs> someone said the shoes look obnoxious i can't lie i do like the shoes I do like anything that deviates from the norm because it's just interesting. So that's why I like the shoes. It's different. I do like them. The price is insane, but from a, if you're trying to do something different, I'll always commend it because it's interesting. Oh, in the Bin Sacking interview, he said he contacted Demna's boyfriend. He said that they are no longer allowed to correlate with controversial slash edgy figures. Uh, him or do edgy clothes to regain a good image. Yeah, that's because of the controversy. I mean, when the controversy happened, they took a lot of control from Demna. Because I remember the CEO saying that Demna had a bit too much creative control and now there are more like checks in balance. So there are more stages that Demna has to go through before things get passed. So it's no longer Demna just has free reign to just do what he wants. So of course, they'll be more careful with what they're doing now as opposed to how it was before. Um, so it's really different. But yeah, I don't know. Like when I look at these, when, when I look at these Balenciaga collections, like I said, I'm not saying Demna is not a good designer because obviously he is. He's an amazing designer. But that does not mean that what he's designing now isn't that interesting or what he's designing now. And even the footwear that I always give Balenciaga credit for because I think every season Balenciaga give us good footwear. Let us remember that Demna is a fashion designer, not a footwear designer. There's a head of footwear that works for Balenciaga that is behind all those things like the Triple S and all the interesting footwear. That's not Demna. Demna doesn't design footwear. So I can't give Demna the credit for the footwear, which I do like because they always do something really interesting every season. Obviously, they'll, the footwear designer will collaborate with Demna, but that's not Demna's area of expertise, which means he's not having most of the creative control and most of the creative ideas when it comes to these crazy footwear designs aren't coming from him anyway. So when we say that, you know, when I just look at the collections, it's almost like, I think it's time for a new creative director. And it's not to say that Demna isn't a good designer. It's just like, it. you look at the collections and it comes across like someone who is out of ideas, which is fine. The, the way the fashion system works, I've said this so many times, um, that I can't even count, that fashion is too fast and designers need to produce so many collections and it's so unsustainable. And I just think we're at that point where it just needs to, there just needs to be a new designer. Like it's the same tactics. The collections are too, we know what is coming before they even come. We know what the collection is going to look like. We know what the inspiration points are going to be like. We know what silhouettes he likes to use. We just know. So there's not really too much more of interest outside of things like the footwear, which he doesn't design, and other aspects which don't really have anything to do with Demna himself, if that makes a lot of sense. So that's my big critique with this collection. So while I did find it interesting, I thought it was quite, you know, funny and kind of witty, this sort of looking at Hollywood culture and him being inspired by that as someone, you know, growing up where he did and watching Hollywood and watching movies and looking at all these things. But I just think he's out of ideas and Balenciaga might need a new direction to keep, you know, being fresh in a way, if that's what they want, obviously. Yeah, I would still like to see Demna at another house, but the Balenciaga era is over. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Who would you like see... Who would you like to see being the new creative director for Balenciaga? I have no idea, but Alessandro Michele would be kind of interesting because Alessandro Michele's maximalist sort of tendencies mixed with, you know, trying to reinvent Cristobal Balenciaga's codes in a way, I think that would be really interesting. But Alessandro Michele has been tied with Chanel, which I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Um, because I've heard that Vision Viard makes some serious money with Chanel. So it's all about the money, isn't it, for these companies? So so long as the money's flowing, nothing else matters. Yeah, I love my team, Rose. I mean, 
Martin Rose would make a lot of sense for Balenciaga because she kind of helped create Demna's menswear vision at Balenciaga um, with some of the earlier collections. So it makes a lot of sense. She's worked with the brand. But is Martin Rose a big enough name though? Because something about these luxury brands and just luxury fashion in general, like the direction it's going in right now, and it makes me wonder is Kering has not had a good financial year this year. I've talked about it a few times in a few videos. It just hasn't gone well for Kering. And so I just think everything needs to be more because these brands are trying to seek an amount of economic growth that just doesn't make sense. They're always striving for more. So we need more famous designers, more famous celebrities in a campaign, more famous celebrities walking on the runaway. We just need more, 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 more. And I think when you're looking at things that way, things start to veer away from the craft and veer away from, you know, a focus on design and more on just profit margins, profit margins, profit margins. So from that respect, is Martin Rose a big enough designer or is Martin Rose the level, well, not level, but the, is she famous enough for her to generate the amount of income that they want, they would require her to generate? Uh, what would Martin Rose Women's Wear look like? I, that's the thing. It'd be really interesting to see what that would look like. It would probably be, you know, when people design menswear collections and then say it's unisex, but it's like, okay, it's, it's a menswear collection, but all menswear is kind of inherently unisex because women wear things that are associated with menswear, like suits and trousers and jeans. But, you know, I, I just, I absolutely find it hilarious when designers design a, an extremely menswear collection like no dresses, no blouses, no skirts, just pure menswear. And they're like, I don't gender my clothes. It's not about gender. It's, it's not, it's, it's women can wear, it's a women's wear collection. It's like, stop it. Uh, they don't have a Delphine Arnaud who's good with talents and interacting with star designers. Oh, you're talking about caring. Um, okay, caring about high star designers anymore. Adi was their last and Martin Rose or Glenn Martins would be great for them. That's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, they don't. They caring hire less star designers now than LVMH. That's definitely true. That being said, I'm wondering how they're going to react to the bad financial year that they had. And mind you, when I say they had a bad financial year, they still had like <laughs> it, the relative. So Kering's bad financial year was the growth of a lot of their brands especially Gucci, slowed down. So because the growth slowed down, the shareholders start panicking because the growth slows down. And then that causes the share value to go down. And then obviously the company is worth less. And that constitutes a bad year for caring, even though these brands are still seeing growth. So they're still seeing growth, but it's a very bad year because the stock prices have gone down. So the value of the company has gone down. So that's, to them, what is a really bad year, apparently, even though, you know, there's growth. But yeah, <laughs> very, very interesting. But yeah, that is, uh, you know, the Balenciaga show in a nutshell. Uh, very, very interesting um, ideas. I just think that Demna needs to reinvent the wheel or just do something different or kind of, you know, more, more interesting than what he's already been doing, because I just think right now, there's not too much of, of interest. Got some more videos of the sneaker, some close-ups. This is the piece that I really liked, this like funnel neck dress, amazing. I also wish I could feel the fabric, because I like stuff that stick up like that. I want to know what's inside the neck to keep it stiff like that and up. Because sometimes people use like horse hair, that, like people use so many different uh, materials to make things that way. You've got Kim Kardashian and decked out in Erewhon. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, like now I can wear like my Balenciaga Erewhon bag when I go to Erewhon. Oh my God. I want to find that video. This is the video where Demna was saying it's all about the craft. Likes or social media or a buzzy title on an article, I couldn't care less about it. And it's not marketing and it's not like you know, business strategies. It's, it's about creativity and about, it's about craft, what I do. And I will always do that. Do you still like the confrontation? Well, yeah, but what is like?
Yeah, that's what I mean. I just feel like Demna's a bit confused in that regard, saying it's not about marketing and it's not about it's all about the craft. I just I just never going to buy it. It's not going to happen. Um, and I hope no one else is buying that crap. This YouTube channel runs on your support. If you want to support the channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon. You'll gain access to exclusive content that includes everything from my Patreon podcast, where I give a behind the scenes insight into the fashion industry, as well as a fashion book club, where I review my favorite fashion books. You can also check out my fashion ebook, which highlights the best fashion journalists to follow, definitions of common fashion terminology, and how to determine what a good source of fashion information is. The links to everything are in the description below. 